But you know khao soy? The yeah, curried yeah, noodles, sure. right? Anyone who's watching can watch my video. It's on Chiang Kong. That's the only place in the whole of Thailand where they sell these noodles. So the noodle house sell them as well. They're the, like Thai bolognese. The original khao soy was closer to that. Khao soy, I'm not pronouncing it correctly, means cut the rice. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. This is part two of the roaming cook with uh, Gary Butler. Uh, we're going to get this started again. Enjoy. Like, subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe it's a bit long-winded if we're going to throw no, this at you on your side. Okay. But would you are able to go on the culinary history food tour, taking us kind of the connection from China to Vietnam, to Cambodia, up to Laos, maybe even in Thailand and, and over to Myanmar? That's a lot to probably cover, but just mm. maybe the, you know, the, the cliff notes of your understanding of the history of this Southeast Asian food. Well, like I would only really, I can only really speak for Thailand. I can't really speak too much for Laos and, and, and um, yeah. stuff. So um, obviously in Bangkok, especially where I live, there's a heavy, heavy Thai Chinese population. As far as I understand it, around 45% of uh, Thailand is Chinese descent yes I, I would probably had to guess that it's more but um so there's there was i think there's two main places where they came from the south of china like uh fujian uh hokkien uh guangdong that southern tip like around hong kong and canton yeah came round uh some of them stopped in Phuket because Phuket was a tin mining place, right? Yeah, they st well, the, the old history goes back. They stopped very south of Vietnam. And mm. There was a tribe called like the Fulong. Fulong, yeah, and yeah. The Fulong actually are like Hokkien's, which is mm -hmm. uh, Fu Fujo, Fujo, which is like uh, shaman. And sa those are the same people that went to Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were travelers. They went all the way. To, that's why you have this language, Hokkien. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get like the, we call it. Uh, me, 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 uh, me, me, yeah, yeah. Uh, me is noodle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me is noodle everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they, those were the Chinese that predominantly came over here. And that's when they had that kind of spread there. Yeah. Um, sorry, I kind of But then you in. also have the, so if you go to north, like Chiang Mai, um, and when you say Myanmar, I don't know that much about Myanmar history, but you've got the Shan State at the top of Myanmar, bottom, yeah, top of Myanmar, um, like just above. Uh, Chiang Mai because Chiang Mai used to be in the Shan state before Thailand like, liberated it I, I guess um, and I've got lots of friends from Shan state that don't if you ask them they will tell you they're not Burmese but Burmese will Burma include them when it suits them like when they want to so, like sell coffee from there or something right yeah. so but ethnically northern Thailand like Chiang Mai Chiang Rai all around there uh, Shan state northern Lao and Yunnan are all ethnically the same. So they all came from Yunnan. There's a there's an area called uh I'm not gonna pronounce this right, but Sibsong Bana. Mm -hmm. It's an autonomous zone in Yunnan, southern China. And if you look at it, if you look at pictures of it, it looks like you're in Thailand. The temples are the same, the writing's near enough the same. Um so there's a big influence there. So that's the Chinese in northern Thailand, that's where they would have come from, Yunnan. So it's the the the, the cuisine's slightly different. That's where Khao Soy came from, which I don't want to get can I I need to give you a history lesson on cow soy. Hey, everyone. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Five Star Marine. Um, they are Phuket's leading and number one private VIP speedboat tour company on the island of Phuket. Uh, go check them out. They're really helping us to operate uh, week to week and to continue making content and give it to the fans like yourselves. Uh, go check them out. Instagram at Five Star Marine. And let's get back to that episode. I will anyway. You know Khao Soy? The yeah, curried yeah, noodles, sure. right? Yeah, they got a good place here. It's called Noodle House. The yeah, Noodle House, right yeah, near me, right? Yeah. So that's not the original Khao Soy. The original Khao Soy is like Khao Soy Lao or Khao Soy Shan, which is what I went to. You can, Anyone who's watching can watch my video. It's on Chiang Kong. I went to Chiang Kong, which is the border town in northern Thailand you're talking about. The Across is the border yeah, town in Lao. It even sounds almost like a Chinese name. All right. And... That's the only place in the whole of Thailand where they sell these noodles. They're rice noodles. They look. Have you had kanom jin nam niao? No. Kanom jin nam can, niao. Can, that sounds like kanom. Can, isn't that like dessert? It's kind of yeah. Well, the noodles translate to Chinese snacks. So yeah, kanom jin. Um, 
So the noodle house sell them as well. They're the like Thai bolognese, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, them yeah, with yeah. the ribs and yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah. So the the original cow soy was closer to that with thicker rice noodles because cow soy, I'm not pronouncing it correctly, means cut the rice, right? So make a sheet of rice and cut it into noodles. So that doesn't make any sense with egg noodles in a dish, right? Mm. It was uh, as I can from translating um, Northern Thai cooking books, as I understand it. It was a Muslim trader from Yunnanese descent in Chiang Mai in around the f- 1940s that went, oh, let's put some coconut milk and some spices. And it just went crazy. And everyone was like, well, this is cow soy now. But the original one, um, yeah, it's from Yunnan, which is one of the, I'm going from one thing to the next, but one of the reasons I went to Luang Prabang in the first place, went back to Luang Prabang, was to eat these noodles. So they sell them in Luang Prabang because the base paste of it comes from northern Lao, which are all Yunnan people. So like, you've got two different types of Chinese. So the main Chinese, the main Chinese that everyone associates with, like eating, like your kuei diao and stuff, that, yeah, that all came from southern China. The rest all came from Yeah, this, uh, well, that would be like, I guess that would be considered western China. Yeah, yeah. This is like Kunming area, the Shangri-La. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, though, I've, I've always wanted to go out there. There's a place... It's near Shangri-La, I can't, outside of Kunming, about five hours. I forget the name of the place. Um, but if you go there, like that area of China, it's nomadic. Like yeah, the Chinese yeah. government doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you go, this is where all the marijuana comes from. Like you walk around there, the ladies are walking around. They, really? They're cooked because they're cooking with it. And just like in mm. Thailand, I had uh, Juan Isara on. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And he was explaining like back like. 30, 40 years ago, like most of the Thai dishes actually would have like marijuana leaves yeah, in it. Yeah, because they were, they're like a natural, um, a natural uh, flavor enhancer like MSG. And apparently people have been putting it in ever since and now it's just legalized. And, oh, now we can tell everyone we've been putting it in for the, like the last... They've been putting it in anyway. Yeah, putting it in anyway. Especially in noodle soups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, do you ever find like... Um, like maybe maybe some motivation or inspiration to make a video. It's like you hear a story of a dish in a location and you want to go discover that. For sure, for sure, for sure. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Like trying to find the origin story of the dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I do, I do. Um, But there is there's there's loads of people that do that better than me. It's like like a the origin, even of something like as generic as pad thai interests me. Like you know the origin of pad thai. I do not. So um, back in it was late thirties, early forties. No one can give you an exact date, but they had like a big nationalistic push in Thailand. So they changed the name of Siam to Thailand. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure they stopped all regional uh, dialects being taught in schools. Yeah, what, a funny side story on that. Yeah. Siam, it's actually a Chinese word for Xi'an, which is X-I-A-N. And that's actually where the word comes from. And there's right. a place in northern Thai- uh, China called Xi'an, yeah, Xi'an which is where uh, the warriors... Bang Bang Mian, uh, well, the terracotta warriors are from there. Cumin noodles, right. yeah. So anyway, Cumin that's land funny, noodles. I read that the other day. I'm like, right, so ah. You know, but that's right. So sorry, that's, I've yeah. missed that part out of the stories because yeah. the prime minister at that point wanted to distance themselves from China, mm. from the communist regime in China, right? They wanted to distance themselves, um, not do as much trade with them and not ha- them ha- not have as much influence on Thailand. That coincided with this nationalistic push. So they had a, uh, like a competition to see what was going to be Thailand's national dish. And Pad Thai won, I think, and it also coincided with them. I think they had a rice shortage, so making the rice into rice flour to make it go further. Mm. But the noodles actually come from Chanterbury. They should come from Chanterbury, actually. Sen Chan. Yeah. So that sort of thing interests me, because I actually met the granddaughter of this prime minister. And I was asking loads of questions. She was just like, oh, I, don't know. I don't know. So I was thinking, oh, at that point, I should have said, oh, I want to meet your grandfather and done the video, but I didn't. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do videos at the moment. Like I say, going to get those noodles from northern Thailand, uh, the Lao Khao Soi or the Yunnan Khao Soi. That's kind of in that kind of realm because I just want to show people there's more dishes to eat than just like Pad Thai, for instance, um, and how it ties in with the culture and stuff. But yeah, I definitely want to go a little bit further into it in the future. Yeah, the, the history side, it's always interesting to find that origin story. Where does mm-hmm. that dish come from? And I mean, Thailand in general, like, uh, I mean, I've been with my girlfriend almost a year. It's like, there's just so many dishes out there that it's very difficult to be exposed to because most of the times mm. you get to those areas and the, the menus are just in Thai and you're just, all right, give me some time and pad Thai, give up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> sure. right. I, yeah I do understand yeah. it for sure. I do get it. I watch a lot of um, 
I watch a lot of Thai YouTubers as well and stuff. So and that gives a bit of direction. Gives me a little bit of yeah. direction. And actually, a couple of them I've seen actually go to a few of my recommendations. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, yeah, I must be doing something right. It's good to find these holes in the wall, especially mm. like when you're living in Phuket. Like even Chris Parker, mm. he was on and he was in Phuket doing some filming. And I ended up finding Noodle House and then another place Ooh. that does like pork belly just around the corner that's like absolutely phenomenal as well. Yeah. Um, from these types of vloggers. Because the problem, the hardest thing, it's not the in Thailand, is that there's so many restaurants. Which ones are good? Exactly right. Like, like how do you know? Exactly right. So I used to, um, what I used to, people always ask me, how do you find stuff? And um, I don't know, I've, I've, this is going to sound, make me sound like a bit of an idiot, but I do have like a natural knack for finding stuff anyway, for research. Like I like to research stuff and stuff. I could walk past somewhere and go, nine times out of 10, I'm like, that's going to be good, that place. And it usually is. But um, a few of them, obviously not. But my main way of doing it used to be, so if I wasn't walking around and just finding places, I'd decide on an area that I like, the look of, I don't even know what it is, but and I would zoom in on Google Maps and I'll just keep clicking on pins in them reading the reviews and before you used to have to translate them and now google will automatically translate them so if it's like auntie's been selling guay job noodles for 90 years and going well this place is going to probably be okay right we'll pin that we'll go and look at that one this one just read through the and if there's anything slightly interesting in what people are saying like it's not just a generic noodle or a generic like curry rice place then that's how i'm pinning it so if anyone wants to do that you can do that yeah. My, see, my process I'll take as well is I, I know it's it's sad and it could be manipulated, but I, I just look like how many reviews there are in terms of total number. Because that just shows you there's so many people going there. That's good. and I'm, Yeah, exactly. But the, the other problem, and this, this is one that I do as well. Um, so say you've got 800 reviews and it's got 4.5. You're like, all right, it's got to be pretty good, right? Whoever's giving it bad reviews is probably an arsehole. But um, I'll dismiss something out of hand if it's got like, 3.6 yeah mm. i wouldn't pretty well even look at it but you might look closer and it's only got three reviews and someone's given it a one-star review because it didn't have any parking outside and it's a street food restaurant and you're like that's taken its yeah, yeah. thing right down so anyone just giving one-star reviews at the moment in the current climate i don't like you yeah we went to this one so we drove from bangkok two weeks ago and mm. came all we had to bring the dog down because we were afraid to put it on the plane so i'm like all right let's just drive yeah, yeah. And we hit up someplace just outside of Bangkok, maybe two hours before you're coming down to uh, Chumpong, this area. So it's still like one of those provinces. Um, uh, I forget the name, right? Like maybe the third province down. I forget the name of one of these provinces. Yeah, yeah. But we just looked it up and it was a phenomenal seafood restaurant, like right on a river. Okay. And you pulled off the highway, yeah, it's yeah. right on the river. In and Chumburi, it's a, right? No. It's got to be Chumburi yeah. coming towards Bangkok. But I mean, I asked A and she's like, oh, this place is so famous. And it had yeah. like 4,000 reviews. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. It, like I got the bill after. It was like 3,000 baht. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Living in Thailand when you're eating like just seafood or, you know, street yeah, food, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah, that's Like a lot, just yeah. for a bill. And like there was stuff on that menu I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they had this, it was like uh it almost looked like seaweed, but it was like green grass almost. And, she, mm -hmm. and she's like, oh, it's only from this area you can get. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Do you have any... Oh, um, uh, I, I couldn't tell you. Chakam, Chakam, maybe. Yeah, it's, she, yeah, didn't e she didn't even know the I name. Chakam, yeah, if it's from Central. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it was mostly maybe. like they were doing crab. Mm. Um, Did it have like the row in the crab and stuff like that? The, 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 orange, e yeah, the eggs. orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I was crushing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she ordered it. I'm like, after, she's like, oh, it's like three... Th I, it's not the money. I just like... What the hell did we eat here? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the shrimp with the like uh, again. I, I, is the red stuff in the river shrimp? Is that the eggs as well? No, that's the head. It's the we, head. we call it butter. I don't know. I don't know the actual. I, I can't find the terminology for it. Head butter. We call it she, brain. I guess she was trying to it's that creamy. Yeah, dip she, it they out. love yeah, it. Yeah, she, it's not. It's not eggs. No, it's, I, um, I thought it was phenomenal. No. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I love it. She was telling me that's actually the original way of how you make tom yum soup. Is that yeah yeah, yeah. You fry the you fry the heads yeah you fry the heads and the redness is actually from, from that. the head butter yeah so there's a there's a stall in um Banglampu in Bangkok Banglampu is where uh Khao San Road is the backpacker area right so everyone goes to Khao San Road and they think like there's only Khao San Road which is like a hundred meter road with awful food everywhere but if you just walk five minutes either way you're like bang in the middle of the old town so there's a Khao Tom Yum Bang Lampu is so good in classic Thailand style. Someone has just opened one next door with the same menu. 
same pictures, everything. They're just exactly the same. But mm. see, they've just got bags and car- like like a Ziploc bags full of like the head butter. And they just squeeze it into the soup. Shit. So it's just creamy, bright orange. No um, no milk in it. Nothing. That's what's making and it. And they're creamy. not using powder like powder. No, 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 fresh. This is all. F- this is all fresh. That's a great one, actually. If anyone wants to check that out, that's a great. It's just called Tom Yum Bang Lam Ball. Yeah, I was watching one of your videos, and I heard you say that, and then it made me think. I'm like, ah, yeah, I n- I noticed that as well. And let's, it's more or less, let's say, like a Tom Yum soup. Mm. You can taste taste when they put a powder or a paste in there yeah, compared yeah. to has this been made with fresh ingredients yeah yeah and it sure. usually hits the tongue a little bit where it's a bit yeah, like yeah. uh chalky yeah 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 and you're yeah, like yeah. okay wait a minute this isn't the real one we got a we got a guy up here that does that and you're just like oh fuck no those restaurants yeah. they'll do like you know 10 dishes are good in one's yeah yeah, yeah yeah for sure for sure for yeah. sure that's the same with all tidies though like so you know if you go to a restaurant, it's, this is this is just a general rule. This doesn't happen with every restaurant. But if you go somewhere where they're selling a hundred different dishes, right? Some are going to be mediocre. For me, like with what I do and what I like to find and what I like to send people to, like street food for me, or it doesn't even have to be street. I call street food like those little mum and pop shops, you know, like just sell like Kalman guy or something, but it's in a shop. I'm still cl- classing that all in the same same vein. Um, it's just cooking something every day. For like thirty years, and um, oh, he just signals that he helps at the time. That means one hour. Oh, uh, right, right. See right. how fast it goes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so like it for me, like street food is you cooking the same dish every single day for like 20, 30 years and just perfecting it and it being exactly the same every single time, and that's all you sell: two dishes, three dishes maximum. And if that's what I want, that's what I'm going to get from you. If I want the tom yum, that's where I'm going for my tom yum. If I want to eat pack of power, I'll go to someone who only sells pack of power or has an unbelievable Tam Sang restaurant, like a, what do you call it? Like a la carte stir fry restaurant um, that is famous for that. Or they might be famous for like Kanamu Krob or something. But I will, that's where I'll, I'll go and that's where I'll send people. There's like, someone asked me the other day, people ask me all the time, like, what's your favorite? Oh, you asked me actually earlier, what, what's your number one video? Like if someone wanted to know what you're about. This video is not so much about what I'm about, but if you're in Bangkok, they would be, my two probably top recommendations for street food, and they're both in one video. One of them is a uh, curry rice shop. It's just called Khao Gang. Khao Gang is curry rice. What's rice. the name of the title if someone wants to search that? I think it's like Old Town Bangkok Street Food okay. Crab. Or something just you're going like to have to watch all his videos yeah. till you find it. Old Town Bangkok. If you type in Old Town Bangkok, the Roman cook, about five videos will come up, and it's one of me holding a piece of crab up that's about that big. Okay. So... The funny thing about this store, it's called Khao Geng, which is like curry rice. Hai so, you know, when you say Hai so, like in Thai, high society. Okay. People use it as like a joke sometimes. Oh, you got a new car. Oh, Hai so, Hai so. Or you're drinking like. Yeah, my Thai is. You're, you're, if you're drinking, <laughs> you're drinking an expensive drink and everyone else is drinking Leo. Oh, Hai so, Hai so. So she's called Khao Geng Hai so. So you think it's going to be like, like an upmarket curry rice store. And it's just down an alleyway next to a canal. The Hai so bit comes from the fact that you get like lumps of crab like that mm-hmm. like um already pr- uh, pre yeah yeah taken out just the joint muscle no shell no nothing yeah, yeah, right yeah. they look like pieces of chicken breast they're massive Jeez. right you can pick two on rice 120 baht which is like for crab uh, that's yeah. insane and yeah. i'm going well this can't be fresh right so where's the crab coming from so it's like oh, i come from champon right and um i got confused actually because i said in the video it comes every day that's not what she meant so when i i go there all the time now i spoke to her the crab comes up once a month. They keep the crab alive in tanks, right, out the back. And then every day they... And fresh crab picked. Yeah, it's but like that price is so cheap. Crazy. Also, they've got prawns, right, like that. River prongs or...? Uh, yeah, river prawns, river prawns. Wow. Massive, though, like... And then just down this little canal. And it's an amazing little place anyway, especially if you're only used to going to, like, Asok or somewhere in Sukhumville or you're just coming over from the UK or Canada or, or America. This is what I would consider to be street food, street food. The next stall along is the most unique noodles. It's a noodle that they only sell in Bangkok anyway, called a kwe tiao. Kwe tiao is another Chinese word, actually, for rice noodle. Is it, isn't it? Is that like bo- noodle, boat noodle soup? Kwe tiao just means any noodle soup. Okay. Well, kwe tiao technically means rice noodle, but they will just say kwe tiao for noodle soup. Kwe tiao kua gai is dry pan-fried chicken noodles that they only really sell in Bangkok 
but she's got her own twist on it. Anyway, I would suggest that you go to these two places. Mm. She cooks over, only cooks over charcoal in these pots. Um, so it's like it's like just like a complete dying art. So that yeah, those two are. I don't know how I got onto that, but no, I just ask of, of those <laughs> videos that that would be if anyone was to watch your channel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like hey, no, go I don't check know how this I switched thing. from the last question to that. Uh, it's okay. That's the podcast. That's yeah, it. It's yeah. not an interview. It's a podcast. <laughs> What um what about the I always I'm just having a brain fart here uh, the lady that does the crab omelet JFI yeah is that is that overrated underrated or right I will say because people think I don't like it for some reason right because I'm um I right so basically I'm not gonna queue to go anywhere like I'm not queuing up to get into a food into a restaurant that sells street food I'll get out of the way now I don't care about the price either like um I knew how much it cost before I went there so that doesn't bother me. Um, during the situation you didn't have to queue right so I just emailed they're like come whatever time you want alright I'll come at 2 o'clock so we came we went there and I'm on the way I'm going oh, it's just going to be overrated not that interested blah 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 as soon as I'm, I'm there I've got my arm around her for the selfie like <laughs> fanboy um, I would say like if if you've had that kind of food before like if you've had Thai Chinese stir fried dishes before it can only be what it is like People go there, and I think the people that are seriously disappointed when they go there go there thinking it's something else. It can't be because if you're making like her favorite dish, her famous dishes are like the crab omelette, which is quite unique. Um, and it's 800 baht, it might be a thousand baht now, right? Yeah, it's like a thousand now. That's yeah. one of the one ti- only times I'll convert back into English money because I go, Oh, this would be 3,000 baht in England. Yeah, it kind of tasted like to me like English fish and chips, like but it was all right. This 500 grams of Lump meat crab. But as I said, I know the other shop, I can go for 120 baht, right? Like, it, it, it's not, um, it's, it's great. It's basically, it's great. She's, I'm mixing my words. It's great to see a 76 year old woman. She might be 77 now cooking every dish herself. That's the same age as my dad. Do I want my dad outside cooking 70 omelets a night for less than 20 pound each? Not really, no. 30 dollars each. No, I don't. So maybe she should, Maybe everyone else should charge a little bit more. But her prices aren't that much more than a seafood restaurant. The restaurant you're talking yeah. about, yeah, I might pay three fifty for a dish in a seafood restaurant. Her dishes are four fifty, so it's not that much. The only problem I had right was there was a problem with the rice at some point that day. So it was inedible rice, and any other shop I would have sent it back because it was just, I didn't want to be rude. So I just we didn't eat any rice. So it's like, but that's another thing. So. A lot of people, you can tell in the reviews, haven't been there because they're like, oh, I wouldn't pay 200 baht for, for steamed rice. It's not 200 baht for steamed rice, it's 20 baht. Like a singer is like 80 baht. It's just normal prices, just that her dishes are expensive. Um, so I'm not sure I answered your question or not. I just no, skirted it's around the more, outside. No, it's, yeah, it's more about like the quality of JFI. I, 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 but I know other places where you can go for the same food or better for not as much money. But what would be kind of a, well, I guess the place you were talking about. Talking in, about in terms there's of another the one called. Um, I found that she wears goggles as well. This other lady called uh, oh, she's gonna f- kill me if I don't remember her name. Uh, An An Tardindang. There's a road called Tardindang, which is about a five minute walk from Icon Siam, and she started as a street food cook like uh, like like Jeffy, and now she's got a proper restaurant like with air conditioning. It's only small, but um. She cooks the same sort of food. It's not actually that different in prices, actually. I would Slightly assume cheap. it to be like just, I, I, so I went there once and the lineup was like, they're like, come back in an hour. We came back and they're like, come back in 30. I'm like, all right, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, what we did. I'm, I'm out of here. And um, I just looked at it. And I'm like, I just have a feeling it's just going to literally taste like egg and crab and it's going to be bland. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the omelette is like, I'm not really into the whole like fry something and then put that like chili ketchup all over it, yeah. which is... Like a lot of my Thai friends like to do uh, that, so that's what that is. Um, and you can get the crab omelet. I know another place that does the same omelet for like two hundred baht. So I'm like, it's probably not as good, but it's not my favorite dish. I would go there for other dishes in yeah. there. Like she did this, uh, like a uh, kapakana, or or you might know it's like kailan, like a Chinese broccoli with abalone, which was probably oh, wow. the best thing we ate. Where was, where was that in Jaffa? That oh, was probably wow. that was probably the best thing we ate in there. That was probably the cheapest thing as well. Um, it's usually abalone, it's not cheap. No. It's usually quite expensive. Yeah, so it's quite... Yeah, I don't... I don't know, I don't know. So the, that's the, it's the argument, isn't it? Like, I've been saying for ages, like, people need to put their prices up because the prices have stayed the same for street food for, like, 12 years. So yeah, now with inflation, you got With inflation, and, like, some people are starting to put them up five baht and stuff, and it's like... 
everyone's like, oh, I can't believe you're putting your prices up. And you're like... They don't know. Yeah, she's she's not making any money, so... Yeah, it's... I mean, you get the... Who did I... Where did I see this? Oh, I was Andrew Tate. I was watching a video, mm. and he was kind of, like, making fun of the, the, the elephant pants, you know, oh, yeah. British backpacker, let's say, oh, where yeah, yeah. they kind of travel around Thailand, and then they hassle the lady, you know on the beach that's selling yeah. hot water bottles and you're trying to take five bottles out of her bottle. pocket. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. How many times? Like, and then they'll happily just walk into 7-Eleven and go, bum, 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 yeah, right. yeah no so don't, It's don't like, this lady's just trying to make, even uh, my girl, well, my girl, so today I took in, I got like a favorite pair of shorts that I've had forever. Everybody has this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like a pair of shorts and the strap, the waistband's gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not giving it up. <laughs> love it. <laughs> love it. It's so comfy. She's like, buy another pair. I'm like, yeah, but I'll buy like four and none of them are comfy. Yeah, and I'll still wear these. So I, I took it into the Thai lady. She fixed the strap. She looked at me and she fixed another pair. So two pairs for 300. Right, yeah. Way too much. Yeah, yeah. And then my t she's like, girl, she's ripping you off. I'm like, it's Thailand. We went through the current situation. Yeah, yeah. I love the shorts. It's probably worth 100, but let's call it a community donation. Yeah, yeah. She's right. like, but how can you pay 300? I'm like, I'm going to go drink three beers after this. Exactly. I'm, like, so I'm going to drink three beers <laughs> and my shorts don't, still don't have any string in them, right? Yeah, so, so I, I mean, there's certain things. The point of that story is, like, in Thailand, you, you I, I don't question and I don't really negotiate. No, no. I think that's kind of maybe, maybe 10 years ago I would have. And it's most of the time it's, you get lost on the currency conversion. Mm. So you don't realize, like... They'll say like 150 and you're trying to take 50 off. But yeah. that 50 is only like two bucks or something. Yeah, exactly, right? But you look at it as 50. 50, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say, uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Like 10 years ago, I would have. But especially now, like, um, I do occasionally with tuk-tuk drivers just because sometimes I have to get yeah, tuk-tuk. No. And like, they've gone from like, in the situation, like you got to a tuk-tuk, even in a tourist area, and you're like, oh, I need to go here. And they're like, okay, yeah, 100 baht. And you're going, yeah, I okay, guess so. Like, it's like, whatever, 20 baht more than it should have been. Still give them 150 or whatever. So yeah. now I'm walking up and them going, 700. And you're like, or 400. And you're yeah, like, I yeah. mean, that's just too, I'm, I could walk there in four minutes. It's like, that's a little bit too much. So, you know, but. Um, uh, but Do you yeah, use your tie in those situations? Yeah, and yeah, they yeah, yeah. And they quickly no, go. I'm, still, I'm always talking in tie. I never go up and go, how much? Or I need to go uh, here. I'm always still, speaking in tie. And they're still, still like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say, I'm not a tourist. And they're like, oh. Okay. Uh, well, see, the, the, I had this problem in China where, and, I, and it could be the same situation here. I, I, don't, I don't use my tie enough, to be honest. Like, it's, it's hard. Um, just yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially in Phuket, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in China, you would go up to them and speak Chinese, and they have no idea. Like, I've had conversations full in Chinese, and then, like, five minutes go by, and they're like, you speak Chinese? <laughs> I go, what the fuck do you think we've been speaking for five minutes? It's like you've, they, you kind of cloud them for. Yeah, yeah. They, they just think someone random came up to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I'm assuming as well, and I asked my girlfriend that, like, it's not just the backpack or the tourist, the white face. Let's no, say. no, 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 no. They're gonna say seven hundred to a Thai person as well. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. They're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah seven hundred. Yeah, so yeah, 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 when you're sure. talking to them. You have to be like, wait, wait, I know I live here. Yeah, yeah, Let's I live here. Like, like, oh. They might look at you like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I didn't even realize yeah, we yeah, were just yeah. speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I just hate having that conversation. I just hate bartering in general. I'd yeah, rather just yeah. like be ripped off a little bit and go, that's for you. Like, no problem. Let's, uh, I know you got to get going soon. It's that's probably right. getting close. What time is it now? Um, what time it's is well, it? Uh, it's a quarter, to pa quarter past two. Quarter past two? Yeah. Oh, shit. Your thing's at three, right? Yeah, but Number fifteen. Or okay, one, I don't mind. Or have we done too much? No, no. I'm. I'm. I'm, we, I'm still. We lost good. the camera, though. Oh, which one? That one. <laughs> oh, but we got that one. We're still good. We, we lost one camera away. down. Um, oops, <coughs> battery cut. There we go. Yeah. We're still. No, we got. This we is got, great for me because I'm learning all the time. Learning what. what he's got a switcher up. over there. That's okay. We got to see. You're still there. Let's cut. Still got me. Let's cut. Ah, uh, oh, it's more close up. What, what usually this one's also dying soon. Okay. Well, we'll wrap it up in ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'll give you a kind of a, a quick rapid fire. It doesn't have to be yep. rapid fire. It's more or less um, in terms of the cuisine as we travel around Thailand, uh, what comes first to your mind as the dish of that area? So let's just start. Okay. Let's start up in the north, uh, uh, Chiang Rai. Khao Soi, but it should be Nam Niao. And as we move down to Chiang Mai, does that change? Khao Soi, but it should be okay. Nam uh, Chiang Rai, Nam Niao. And, and then we'll fill in some gaps if I miss anything along the way. Now, as we move out like, east to east and we're getting to Loi and, and uh, Nong Kai, mm. this, this area of Thailand on the Mekong, what first comes to your mind? 
For me, it should probably should be Isan food, but for me, probably the the Thai Vietnamese food. So maybe uh, I don't know, Gue Chap, Gue Chap Yuan. And what is that? Exactly? It's uh, Vietnamese noodles. It's confusing because Gue Chap is actually uh, rolled. Is rolled it? rice noodle soup. And then you're putting some, like, like a lettuce inside? No, or? no, no. It's just like a, it's like the same noodles you get for, like, uh, Pad Siu, but they're just rolled up. Got it. Yeah, yeah. And it's in a soup with, like, all the innards of the pork. So you get heart, liver, lung, crispy pork. Uh, and you can either have it Nam Sai, which is peppery, or Nam Kon, which is, like, a, a dark version with, like, Chinese spices. There's one in Bang Tao, actually, I'll send you. You should go and try it in if you Bang haven't Tao? tried it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really send, good. Yeah, send me a link. But Gue Jab Yuen has no resemblance to that. It's literally um, a rice and tapioca starch noodles with, um, like, pork ribs, pork balls, um, loads of different stuff. It's called um, Khao Piak Sen, which means wet noodles in Lao. Mm. And it took me ages to work out they were the same thing, so I kept eating it in Lao, going, off. These are really familiar. Well, it's, out, it's exactly the same. But that's one of those dishes that um, from when I went to Vietnam, I'm like, oh, this is the original bang gan in Vietnamese. Mm. Although they're not the same, the noodles are the same. So it's bang gan usually has fish in it, and whereas gue jab has been like, what can we find? I don't know, for Thai people, I guess, or Lao people. So. Uh, well, they're using... That wasn't it's, it's, fire, still, was it? it's still... Ah, no, that's fine. I mean, it's just... We'll, we'll go through the map quick and... Uh, explain a little bit just so people can understand there is the 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 cuisine in thailand it is quite diverse, so diverse. and i think a lot of people that might be new to your channel or even yeah, our yeah. channel like most people just go some tom green curry pat yeah yeah, yeah 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 for sure but they even saying that like you know thai people uh, sorry not thai people like falang that have been here wow like, oh, i don't eat uh, pad thai i don't eat green curry yeah uh, foreigner food i never never to. met a thai person that doesn't eat green curry or pad thai like all of my friends eat green curry on a regular basis i mean there's just a reason why some things are really popular like a doner kebab for instance like yeah. it must at some point like everyone went well this is amazing but well, i think you always come back to a pizza uh, yeah i mean Sorry. you you'll go out and like a pad thai even for myself it's like i might have it w once every 10 dishes yeah, yeah and you yeah. always come back to it come and you're back like you know what i feel like a pad thai yeah, 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 That's, exactly it's like right. a burger exactly um right. as we move through isan um sorry no, I was just going to say, I've, so I'm so indecisive. I should have saved Kwe Jab Yuen for uh, Udon Tani or Ubon Ratchatani, but... Do the dishes drastically change as we move throughout Isan, like Buri Ram, uh, Surin? And I, I get really lost as you get out to, like, the almost Cam Cambodian border. Cambodian border, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Can you walk us through the Isan? I haven't been too far down to Surin and stuff. I've got a lot of friends from Surin. Mm. And um, a, lot, a, lot, a, a lot of friends from Surin. Um, and I said, I'm like, oh, let's... Let's go to Surin together and you can show me the food. And they're like, no point. It's boring. There's nothing there. But I was expecting there to be a lot more Cambodian food there and they were saying there isn't. So I wouldn't, I can't speak too much. I haven't been down there. The furthest towards Cambodia I've been is like the bottom of Prat, like uh, the Got yeah. Chang side, but keep going further to the actual Cambodian border down yeah. there. Um, but again, there's not much Cambodian influence down there either. I'm assuming when you're getting closer to the sea, it's just seafood. Yeah, yeah. So to answer your question, sorry, so as you keep going around, uh, the mayor called like Ubon Ratchatani, Udon Tani. Like Udon Tani again has loads of um, Vietnamese food. Loads. Like every shop for breakfast is Vietnamese food. Same with Nakon Panom, Ubon Ratchatani. Um, and the same Isan food as well. Um, then if you get down to like, uh, like Kalasin, uh, they're famous for duck. So there's a lot of like duck lap. But that's the same in Udon as well in Ubon. Isan food is pretty similar, yeah. Yeah, especially, I mean, lot of all bala. these different types of som yeah. somtum is, that's like, what Somtum, talking. but what, what we eat for somtum, or what people think is somtum, somtum papaya salad, somtum Thai, that is somtum for Thai people, not somtum for Isan people. Mm. So when the, sorry, I'm going to get well off topic here. Oh, that's fine. Um, so when the f mass wave of people from Isan came to Bangkok to work, which is like mid 80s apparently, which I thought it was much earlier than that. They built a road out on the first highway out to Isan. So loads of people came, I think, coincided with the... I could be wrong here as well. I think coincided with the uh, like the tourist boom, like the hotels being built and stuff like that. But when they came and brought the bala, do you eat bala? The fermented fish? Uh, no, I don't think, no. So sometimes bought bala is like salted crab and fermented fish paste. Mm. Basically, just puts a load of fish, all fish cuts, everything in a barrel, cover it with salt, boom, leave it for six months. Yeah, that's it, right? Thai people apparently were like, in Bangkok, were like, what 
fuck is this? And I can't, <laughs> like, didn't take to it. So then they made Som Tum Thai, which is the one with the lime yeah. juice, garlic, chili, uh, palm sugar, and uh, fish sauce, right? So now yeah. everyone thinks that's Som Tum, but that's the name, it's in the name, Som Tum Thai, Som Tum for Thai people, mm. not for Lao and Isan. So Lao have this uh, padek, which is the same thing as bala, this fermented fish, and it's in everything. It's funky. It's one of the few things that I'm yet to like fully embrace. Like it's been very difficult. For yeah, me. my girlfriend eats it all. It's a bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not good with the fermented fish stuff. I can eat. I can eat anything. I'm but, not. But yeah, it's yeah. still like. Ah, you know. But for me, it's mental because I eat shrimp paste all the time. Yeah, and I eat some other funky stuff as well. So, all right, let's hit some other provinces. Yeah, but how's the camera? Okay, yeah, I was just checking that. So some um, uh, gayang, which is grilled chicken, kormu yang, grilled uh, pork neck. That's what I would associate with Isan with your sticky rice, like spicy, fiery salads, grilled meat, lots of sticky rice, lots of chili paste, like farmers going out, mm -hmm. taking out, back in the day, taking out like a big pot of rice, sticky rice, some chili paste that lasting them all day. That like real workers food, you know, like if I want to, you want to get home after a day's manual graft, manual work, just the grilled chicken, some pork, some rice, some like salad. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's more the countryside, just countryside. like if we were to go back home, yeah, whatever, right, exactly. it's the same yeah, yeah. shit, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not eating that high society stuff. Right, exactly. When you go out to the making our way from there, um, and maybe if I skip something, I find Kanchanaburi has a very unique cuisine as well. Like when you get they because they also have Kanchanaburi. There's they, I, what did I eat out there? River, river snail. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've got the snails out there. They've yeah. got the snails out there. The food scene in Western, like, so when you actually ask, um, when, when you talk about Thai regions, they you talk about four regions. You talk about north, north, northeast, yep. um, central and south. But like they forget about... completely forget. There's east as well, but we don't. no one talks about west, ever. They just don't get a mention, um, which is a shame, really. <laughs> but there's not I guess you just have Kanchanaburi and then maybe the Mai Had song like yeah this, yeah yeah, this yeah. so it's song. kind of it's own like sort of um, province like it's own sorry it's own like a yeah there's a really have you, I don't know if you've have you ever been out to have you know a place called Song Club Burry Song Club Burry yeah have with the there? biggest wooden bridge in the t have you been there I've not it's on oh, my list to go next I've, month I've been there it's yeah. amazing great uh, it's just the drive, so you go to Kanchanaburi and the reason you're going out there is you have the Irrawan Falls yeah yeah and then you just keep going. I, I just was on a bike tour. You know those bike tours? You're like, fuck it. The, what, the Mian borders, borders <laughs> another four just, hours? Let's go. Let's go. And uh, then you get out there, and yep. it's a, it's a t I think I've told this story before in the podcast, but basically it's a teak bridge that goes one way, and it splits two. Yep. And then you have the Thais here, the Burmese there, and the Han, the Han there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. there's a boxing ring there, and they all kick yep. the shit out of each other. Nice. And it's just like, and they're all friends. friends and like yeah, once yeah. a week, they're like, all right, Have let's settle this, this shit. This <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one of, that's really high on my list, actually. Yeah. I think it's got the longest wooden bridge in Thailand. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Yeah. And because that place you have there, what's called the Three Pagoda Pass. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. go right there to the border. And it's, it's very historic because that pass, this is how the Burmese came in to fight in Bangkok. Because oh. it's a mountain pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's no, that's the history back there. Okay. But out at Kanchanaburi, yeah, it's the, the river snow. Yeah. Um, okay, jumping ahead. And as we're moving down, pretty much as you... I did the drive from Bangkok and I noticed... What I I can never pronounce this province's province Someone's name. So no, it's like Priya Kiri. Patrick Kiri Khan. There you go. So before <laughs> you, you get before you, you get to that, that before you get to that you've got um, Petchaburi or Petbury. Yep. They just locals just call it Petbury. That's a really interesting place actually. So um, that's just been listed. Or it might have been last year. There's like three or four UNESCO gastronomy cities or something in Thailand. So it's been designated its own thing, right? So Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and there, I think, and maybe Phuket, I'm not sure. Petchaburi. Petchaburi, Petbury, they call it, right? So there's where, where the best palm sugar in, that's where all the palm sugar plantations are. So you can go and watch people making palm sugar. That's the best, um, best palm sugar in, in mm. Thailand. Um, they've got the salt there, and then they've got the Karen... Galian, I, I heard um, you had Paddy, the Paddy uh, Doyle. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Speak Paddy, Paddy. He was, Paddy yeah, Jenkins. so he was talking about where he was and the, yeah. the Karen tribe, right? So you've got the Karen chilies there as well, originate from there. Ah. So you've got the best chilies, you've got the best salt, and you've got the best sugar. And the, the saying is there that the food is so bold in flavor there because they're never going to run out of natural ingredients. So they back in the day, they've never had to worry about oh, we can't put too much of this in or too ah. much of that in because. 
we've always got an abundance of things. So, um, yeah, that's a really interesting place. There's like five dishes there. Um, Kwe Tiao Nam Dang, red sauce noodles. Then you've got Kao uh, Jia, I can't say it properly, but it's like an iced rice dish. Hanom Jin noodles with fish cakes. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this, that's a really interesting province. So if you're mm. talking about that stretch, like Hawaiian, Pachip Kiri Khan, I just forget that unless you're eating seafood and stick to pepperi, yeah. Mm. For interesting Yeah, because we went down, we went through there, I think we ate a bit north at the, the, this river type of mm. uh, seafood spot. Uh, we kind of ripped through all that. Our camera's good, you're giving... Oh, we lost, we lost a camera. It's not less dead, dead, dead yet, but... Okay, well, well, we'll we'll wrap this up in a second, just so we can get the plug in. Um, as we move s south, I think kind of as you hit like southern Thailand, like you can really see around Surataini things start to change. I notice yeah. then it's becoming, you know, you, you're seeing the mosques. It's becoming southern yep, Thailand. Southern Thailand. How would you describe southern Thai food? Ah, oh, so it depends what southern Thai food we're talking about. So if you're just talking classic southern Thai food, I would call it why it's one of my favorites is because it's just straight salty and spicy, hot. Spicy, uh, ped pedron, they say down there. Pedron, ped They're is hot. spicy, and ron is hot. But you wouldn't usually say ron to um, describe food, unless it, you mean, oh, it's hot in temperature. Yes. But it's spicy and hot means, like, it's hot and it's there's some warmth. It's, that's how they describe it. So, like, um, your cow gangs down here, like, uh, one of my favourite dishes, like pork rib curry, mm. geng hua, si kong mu. Um, sato, the stink beans, once you start seeing them, loads and loads of turmeric, um, yeah, and just loads and loads of vegetables and herbs that you don't know what they are because each town, like Patalung, uh, Patani, like everyone will have different um, veg to go in the same dishes, like Geng Som, the sour curry. Some might use like uh, pa uh, papaya, some might use. I've heard watermelon rind, ordib, if anyone can tell what ordib is, taro stems. So yeah, just loads of different curries. But then you've also got the uh, like the real sort of Malay influence and like the southern yep. Thai Muslim influence. So you've got like your cow moks, your biryanis, um, amazing fried chicken. Yeah, Can't everything. beat Southern Thailand for fried chicken, honestly. Everything here is fried chicken. Like, when I open my window, it just reeks like fried, fried chicken. chicken. But then it. I'm already, like, on KFC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that's, that's, what I, that's what I'd associate. Just spicy, spicy curries, lots of fresh veg, um, and lots of, um, like, fermented, uh, you know, like, sh shrimp paste. Shrimp paste, for one, is one of oh, the... Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> shrimp paste. Shrimp paste as my leg locks up. Yeah, I know. I get those right in the calf. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. man. I've had a couple where you wake up and you're just like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Um, okay, we're going to we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm just afraid for the camera. I don't want right. to lose it as we cut to you. The last question, and I guess it's for all the foodies here and anyone that's lived in Thailand long enough, how many chilies in your samtam? Sib mekorai, you sib mekorai. Ten, ten, twenty, as many as you want. Fucking hell, as many as you want. Usually, if I'm with other people, we settle on about five. But I can do ten, yeah, fifteen. I'm, I'm so. half a chili. Yeah, but then you'll get one, um, and I'll go. Oh, I just ordered it for my wife. I just have half a chili, and then that half a chili, for whatever reason, absolutely blows your head off. Right? Yeah, I, it's something to yeah. do. Like I can eat the chili and whatever, but it's something the chili and the samtam and the juice. It like yeah, gets yeah. soaks and it up. And sometimes with the samtam, like. Whoever's before you's ordered 20 chilies and they just like, then you've ordered no chili, but you're still getting all the chili from the right on the side of the oh, pot. Oh, shit. Because you know? they don't wash it, do they? They just use the next one. So. But yeah, 10, 20, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Hans, 10, 20? No. He's like half a chili, not a chance. No, no. Yeah. Just like, like all my maybe, friends from Bangkok. Four, five. Yeah, well, thank God for the bum gun. All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll wrap this up. We're going to kick the, you're going to have to use that camera. Well, fuck, I look so like deadly, deathly. Why do I look so white? Right now. Um, anyways, we're going to kick it back to Gary on this camera here. If you could just let everybody know where they can find you on YouTube and, and Instagram. And yeah, that's that. So you can find me at Gary Butler, the roaming cook on YouTube. We'll just type in the roaming cook and it comes up. Uh, the underscore roaming underscore cook on Instagram. And that's it. I'm not on Twitter. Uh, oh, on Facebook. You can find me on the roaming cook on Facebook if you want as well. 
And if you want any questions, you can email me at theromancook at gmail.com. Perfect. Um, all right. So that I never know how to end these. That wrap, uh, wraps up another episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and we're out. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thank you. Thank you.